everyone. I've spent nearly 20 years working with victims and survivors of conflict, specifically refugees. Many refugees suffer extreme violations of their human rights from ethnic cleansing to rape to child marriage or trafficking. Most have no hope of justice because of the institutions of law have collapsed or because the government that was supposed to protect them violated their rights in the first place. Because of this work, I've spent a lot of time in places where violence against a spouse or family member is perfectly legal, as it is in nearly 50 countries which do not have legislation criminalizing domestic violence. And throughout, I was always so grateful to live in a stable, democratic country protected by the rule of law. I thought I could focus on these extreme needs and vulnerabilities for refugees because the situation in my own country, although far from perfect, was somehow taken care of. I wasn't conscious of the sheer numbers of women murdered each year in our country as a result of domestic homicide, or that between four and seven children die daily in America as a result of child abuse, one of the worst records of all industrialized nations. I have spent a lot of time with child victims of conflict and was familiar with the trauma that they suffer. I think, for example, of a teenage Syrian boy who I met who lost the ability to speak after his mother was killed by a missile in their home. But I wasn't aware then of the scientific research in the US and elsewhere that showed the impact of witnessing or experiencing domestic violence on the brains and bodies of children. And that in fact, we have a child health emergency in America as a result of violence in the home. None of these issues in America were at the center of my work until it became personal for me, as it does for so many families. And it was shocking to me to learn how easily serious issues of abuse and trauma can be dismissed by law enforcement and judges, or that judges deciding custody cases generally aren't required to have training on domestic violence or the neurobiology of trauma and trauma effects on children. Or to witness the way that law enforcement, forensic evaluators, and other responders can frequently assess the severity of abuse inaccurately and discount injuries experienced by people of color due to racial bias in forensic evidence collection. I know that many of you are deeply knowledgeable about the harm caused by domestic violence. You confront the barriers to access to justice and safety that survivors live with every day. There may well have been times when you felt you were unable to protect a client because of the gaps and loopholes that exist in our laws. The Violence Against Women Act has now been reauthorized and with some stronger provisions. It requires court processes and laws that minimize the risk of harm to children. Standards for experts in custody cases and training for judges, mediators, custody evaluators, guardians, and child representatives. And like you, I hope that this will enable better protection of vulnerable children and that you can give a real emphasis in your work to the need for implementation in each of our states. I was one of those lobbying for the creation of a grant program for forensic evaluators to utilize current technology to detect bruising across all skin tones and to be trained on standards of practice. This grant program is now in place and I hope that it will have a positive effect on ensuring better protection as well as better legal outcomes for survivors of color. None of us is naive and we know that these are extremely complex issues and cases and that the law has to evolve constantly. The Violence Against Women Act, as it stands, will not be the final word on this subject, but I hope that you will do everything you can to ensure that it is implemented and upheld. Without exaggeration, what you are able to do may make the difference between whether a child is being protected and given appropriate medical care so they can recover from trauma, or that child facing a lifetime of health and social problems, or even taking their own life. So it could not be more important, and I hope that each of you will do everything that you can. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful for the chance to speak to you.